The Taittiriya Upanishad, Devanagari, Taittiriya Upanishad is a Vedic-era Sanskrit text, embedded as three chapters of the Yajurveda. It is a Mukya primary, principal Upanishad, and likely composed about 6th century BC. The Taittiriya Upanishad is associated with the Taittiriya school of the Yajurveda, attributed to the pupils of sage Tidiri, literally, partridge. It lists as number seven in the Muktika canon of 108 Upanishads. The Taittiriya Upanishad is the 7th, 8th and 9th chapters of Taittiriya Aranyaka, which are also called, respectively, the Siksavali, the Anandavali and the Burgavali. This Upanishad is classified as part of the Black Yajurveda, with the term Black implying the unarranged, motley collection of verses in Yajurveda, in contrast to the White well arranged Yajurveda where Brihadaranyaka Upanishad and Isha Upanishad are embedded. The Upanishad includes verses that are partly prayers and benedictions, partly instruction on phonetics and praxis, partly advice on ethics and morals given to graduating students from ancient Vedic Garukula S schools, partly a treatise on allegory, and partly philosophical instruction. Etymology <inaudible> 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 Taittiriya is a Sanskrit word that means, from Tidiri. The root of this name has been interpreted in two ways, from Vedic sage Tidiri, who was the student of Yaska, or alternatively, it being a collection of verses from mythical students who became, partridges, birds, in order to gain knowledge. The later root of the title comes from the nature of Taittiriya Upanishad which, like the rest of, dark or black Yajurveda is a motley, confusing collection of unrelated but individually meaningful verses. Each chapter of the Taittiriya Upanishad is called a valley, valley which literally means a medicinal vine like climbing plant that grows independently yet is attached to a main tree. Paul Dusan states that this symbolic terminology is apt and likely reflects the root and nature of the Taittiriya Upanishad, which too is largely independent of the liturgical Yajurveda, and is attached to the main text. Topic. Chronology The chronology of Taittiriya Upanishad, along with other Vedic era literature, is unclear. All opinions rest on scanty evidence, assumptions about likely evolution of ideas, and on presumptions about which philosophy might have influenced which other Indian philosophies. Stephen Phillips suggests that Taittiriya Upanishad was likely one of the early Upanishads, composed in the first half of 1st millennium BCE, after Brihadaranyaka, Chandogya, and Isha, but before Aitareya, Kashataki, Kena, Katha, Manduka, Prasna, Svetasvatara, and Maitri Upanishads, as well as before the earliest Buddhist Pali and Jaina canons, Renata shares the view of Phillips in chronologically sequencing Taittiriya Upanishad with respect to other Upanishads. Paul Dusan and Winternitz, hold a similar view as that of Phillips, but place Taittiriya before Isha Upanishad, but after Brihadaranyaka Upanishad and Chandogya Upanishad. According to a 1998 review by Patrick Olivelle, the Taittiriya Upanishad was composed in a pre-Buddhist period, possibly 6th to 5th century BCE. Topic. Structure The Taittiriya Upanishad has three chapters, the Sicha Valley, the Ananda Valley and the Brigu Valley. The first chapter Sicha Valley includes twelve Anuvaka lessons. The second chapter Ananda Valley, sometimes called Brahmananda Valley includes nine verses. The third chapter Brigu Valley consists of ten verses. Some ancient and medieval Hindu scholars have classified the Taittiriya Upanishad differently, based on its structure. For example, Sayana in his Basya review and commentary calls the Shiksha Valley seventh chapter of the Aranyaka as Samiti Upanishad, and he prefers to treat the Ananda Valley and Brigu Valu eighth and ninth Prapathakas as a separate Upanishad and calls it the Varani Upanishad. The Upanishad is one of the earliest known texts where index was included at the end of each section, along with main text, as a structural layout of the book. At the end of each valley in Taittiriya Upanishad manuscripts, there is an index of the Anuvakas which it contains. The index includes the initial words and final words of each Anuvaka, as well as the number of sections in that Anuvaka. For example, the first and second Anuvakas of Shiksha Valley state in their indices that there are five sections each in them, the fourth Anuvaka asserts there are three sections and one paragraph in it, while the twelfth Anuvaka states it has one section and five paragraphs. 
The Ananda Valley, according to the Embedded Index, state each chapter to be much larger than currently surviving texts. For example, the first Anuvaka lists Pratika words in its index as Brahmavid, Item, Iam, and states the number of sections to be 21. The second Anuvaka asserts it has 26 sections, the third claims 22, the fourth has 18, the fifth has 22, the sixth Anuvaka asserts in its index that it has 28 sections, seventh claims 16, eighth states it includes 51 sections, while the ninth asserts it has 11. Similarly, the third valley lists the Pratika and Anukramani in the index for each of the ten Anuvakas. Content Shiksha Valley The Sicha Valley chapter of Taittiriya Upanishad derives its name from Shiksha Sanskrit, Siksa which literally means, "...instruction, education". The various lessons of this first chapter are related to education of students in ancient Vedic era of India, their initiation into a school and their responsibilities after graduation. It mentions lifelong, "...pursuit of knowledge", includes hints of self-knowledge", but is largely independent of the second and third chapter of the Upanishad which discuss Atman and self-knowledge. Paul Dusan states that the Shiksha Valley was likely the earliest chapter composed of this Upanishad, and the text grew over time with additional chapters. The Sicha Valley includes promises by students entering the Vedic school, an outline of basic course content, the nature of advanced courses and creative work from human relationships, ethical and social responsibilities of the teacher and the students, the role of breathing and proper pronunciation of Vedic literature, the duties and ethical precepts that the graduate must live up to post graduation. Topic. A student's promise, first Anuvaka The first Anuvaka lesson of Taittiriya Upanishad starts with benedictions, wherein states Adi Shankara, major Vedic deities are proclaimed to be manifestations of Brahman cosmic soul, the constant universal principle, unchanging reality. Along with the benedictions, the first Anuvaka includes a prayer and promise that a student in Vedic age of India was supposed to recite. Along with benedictions to Vedic deities, the recitation stated, Adi Shankara comments that the peace phrase is repeated thrice, because there are three potential obstacles to the gain of self-knowledge by a student, one's own behavior, other people's behavior, and the devas, these sources are exhorted to peace. Topic. Phonetics and the theory of connecting links, second and third Anuvaka The second Anuvaka highlights phonetics as an element of the Vedic instruction. The verse asserts that the student must master the principles of sound as it is created and as perceived, in terms of the structure of linguistics, vowels, consonants, balancing, accentuation, stress, meter, speaking correctly, and the connection of sounds in a word from articulatory and auditory perspectives. Taittiriya Upanishads emphasizes, in its later Anuvakas, Svadaya, a practice that served as the principal tool for the oral preservation of the Vedas in their original form for over two millennia. Svadaya as a part of students' instruction, involved understanding the linguistic principles coupled with recitation practice of Indian scriptures, which enabled the mastering of entire chapters and books with accurate pronunciation. The ancient Indian studies of linguistics and recitation tradition, as mentioned in the second Anuvaka of Taittiriya Upanishad, helped transmit and preserve the extensive Vedic literature from 2nd millennium BCE onwards, long before the methods of mass printing and book preservation were developed. Michael Witzel explains it as follows. The Vedic texts were orally composed and transmitted, without the use of script, in an unbroken line of transmission from teacher to student that was formalized early on. This ensured an impeccable textual transmission superior to the classical texts of other cultures, it is, in fact, something like a tape recording. Not just the actual words, but even the long-lost musical tonal accent as in Old Greek or in Japanese has been preserved up to the present. The third Anuvaka of Shiksha Valley asserts that everything in the universe is connected. In its theory of connecting links, it states that letters are joined to form words and words are joined to express ideas, just like earth and heavens are forms causally joined by space through the medium of vayu air, and just like the fire and the sun are forms causally connected through lightning with the medium of clouds. It asserts that it is knowledge that connects the teacher and the student through the medium of exposition, while the child is the connecting link between the father and the mother through the medium of procreation. 
Speech expression is the joining link between upper and lower jaw, and it is speech which connects people. Topic: A teacher's prayer, fourth anuvaka. The fourth anuvaka of Shiksha Valley is a prayer of the teacher. The structure of the fourth anuvaka is unusual because it starts as a metered verse but slowly metamorphoses into a rhythmic Sanskrit prose. Additionally, the construction of the verse has creative elements that permits multiple translations. The fourth Anuvaka is also structured as a liturgical text, with many parts rhythmically ending in svaha, a term used when oblations are offered during yajna rituals. Topic. A theory of oneness and holy exclamations, fifth and sixth Anuvaka. The fifth Anuvaka declares that, Bior, Bhuva, Svar are three holy exclamations, then adds that bhur is the breathing out, bhuva is the breathing in, while svar is the intermediate step between those two. It also states that, Brahman is Atman, self, and all deities and divinities are its limbs, that, self knowledge is the eternal principle, and the human beings who have this oneness and self knowledge are served by the gods. The second part of the sixth Anuvaka of Shiksha Valley asserts that the Atman soul, self, exists. And when an individual self attains certain characteristics, it becomes one with Brahman cosmic soul, eternal reality. These characteristics are listed as follows in verse 1.6. 2. The sixth Anuvaka ends with exhortation to meditate on this oneness principle, during Prachina Yogya, Prachina Yogya ancient yoga, making it one of the earliest mentions of the practice of meditative yoga as existent in ancient India. Topic. Parallelism in knowledge and what is Om, 7th and 8th Anuvaka The 7th Anuvaka of Shiksha Valley is an unconnected lesson asserting that, "...everything in this whole world is fivefold." Sensory organs, human anatomy skin, flesh, sinews, bones, marrow, breathing, energy fire, wind, sun, moon, stars, space earth, aerial space, heavens, poles, intermediate poles. This section does not contextually fit with the sixth or eighth lesson. It is the concluding words of the seventh Anuvaka that makes it relevant to the Taittiriya Upanishad, by asserting the idea of fractal nature of existence where the same hidden principles of nature and reality are present in macro and micro forms, there is parallelism in all knowledge. Paul Dusan states that these concluding words of the seventh lesson of Shiksha Valley assert, there is parallelism between man and the world, microcosm and macrocosm, and he who understands this idea of parallelism becomes there through the macrocosm itself. What is Om? The Eighth Anuvaka, similarly, is another seemingly unconnected lesson. It includes an exposition of the syllable word Om, Om sometimes spelled A-U-M, stating that this word is inner part of the word Brahman, it signifies the Brahman, it is this whole world states the eight lesson in the first section of the Taittiriya Upanishad. The verse asserts that this syllable word is used often and for diverse purposes, to remind and celebrate that Brahman. It lists the diverse uses of Om in ancient India, at invocations, at Agnidra, in songs of the Samans, in prayers, in sastras, during sacrifices, during rituals, during meditation, and during recitation of the Vedas. Topic. Ethical duties of human beings, Ninth Anuvaka The Ninth Anuvaka of Shiksha Valley is a rhythmic recitation of ethical duties of all human beings, where Svadaya is the perusal of oneself, study yourself, and the pravakana, pravakana exposition and discussion of Vedas is emphasized. Topic. Tenth Anuvaka The Tenth Anuvaka is obscure, unrelated lesson, likely a corrupted or incomplete surviving version of the original, according to Paul Dusan. It is rhythmic with Mahabrihati Yavamadya meter, a mathematical Eight plus eight plus twelve plus eight plus eight. Structure. Max Muller translates it as an affirmation of one's self as a capable, empowered, blissful being. The tenth Anuvaka asserts, "I am he who shakes the tree. I am glorious like the top of a mountain. I, whose pure light of knowledge has risen, am that which is truly immortal, as it resides in the sun. I, soul, self, am the treasure, wise, immortal, imperishable." This is the teaching of the Veda, by sage Trisanku. 
Shankara states that the tree is a metaphor for the empirical world, which is shaken by knowledge and realization of Atman Brahman self, eternal reality and hidden invisible principles. <laughs> Convocation address to graduating students, living ethically, 11th Anuvaka The 11th Anuvaka of Shiksha Valley is a list of golden rules which the Vedic era teacher imparted to the graduating students as the ethical way of life. The verses ask the graduate to take care of themselves and pursue dharma, artha and kama to the best of their abilities. Parts of the verses in section 1.11. 1, for example, state The 11th Anuvaka of Shiksha Valley list behavioral guidelines for the graduating students from a gurukul. The third section of the 11th Anuvaka lists charity and giving, with faith, sympathy, modesty and cheerfulness, as ethical precept for the graduating students. Scholars have debated whether the guidelines to morality in this Taittiriya Upanishad Anuvaka are consistent with the know yourself spirit of the Upanishads. Adi Shankara states that they are, because there is a difference between theory and practice, learning the need for self-knowledge and the ethics that results from such self-knowledge is not same as living practice of the same. Ethical living accelerates self-knowledge in the graduate. Topic. Graduating students' acknowledgement, 12th Anuvaka The last Anuvaka lesson of Taittiriya Upanishad, just like the first Anuvaka, starts with benedictions, wherein Vedic deities are once again proclaimed to be manifestations of Brahman cosmic soul, unchanging reality. Along with the benedictions, the last Anuvaka includes an acknowledgement that mirrors the promise in first Anuvaka. Topic. Ananda Valley The second chapter of Taittiriya Upanishad, namely Ananda Valley and sometimes called Brahmananda Valley, focuses like other ancient Upanishads on the theme of Atman self, soul. It asserts that, Atman exists. It is Brahman, and realizing it is the highest, empowering, liberating knowledge. The Ananda Valley asserts that knowing one's self is the path to freedom from all concerns, fears into a positive state of blissful living. The Ananda Valley is remarkable for its kosha Sanskrit, kosa theory or layered maya theory, expressing that man reaches his highest potential and understands the deepest knowledge by a process of learning the right and unlearning the wrong. Real deeper knowledge is hidden in layers of superficial knowledge, but superficial knowledge is easier and simplistic. The Ananda Valley classifies these as concentric layers sheaths of knowledge seeking. The outermost layer it calls Anamaya which envelops and hides Pranamaya, which in turn envelops Manamaya, inside which is Vijnanamaya, and finally the Anandamaya which the Upanishad states as the innermost, deepest layer. The Ananda Valley asserts that self-knowledge is not Attainable by cultic worship of God or gods motivated by egoistic cravings and desires Manamaya. Vijnanamaya or one with segregated knowledge experiences the deeper state of existence but it too is insufficient. The complete, unified and blissful state of self-knowledge is, states Ananda Valley, that where one becomes one with all reality, there is no separation between object and subject, I and we, Atman and Brahman. Realization of Atman is a deep state of absorption, oneness, communion. The Ananda Valley is one of the earliest known theories in history on the nature of man and knowledge, and resembles but pre dates the Hellenistic Hermetic and Neoplatonic theories recorded in different forms about a millennium later, such as those expressed in the Corpus Hermetica. <laughs> Anamaya, 1st and 2nd Anuvaka The first Anuvaka commences by stating the premise and a summary of the entire Ananda Valley. Brahmavidapnati param tadesabhyukta satam janyanamanantam Brahma one who knows Brahman, reaches the highest. Satya reality, truth, is Brahman. Jnana knowledge, is Brahman. Ananta infinite, is Brahman. Paul Dusan notes that the word Ananta in verse the first of may be Vulgate, and a related term Ananda, similarly pronounced, is more consistent with the teachings of other Upanishads of Hinduism, particularly one of its central premise of Atman being Sat Chit Ananda. In Dusan's review and translation, instead of, Brahman is infinite, an alternate expression would read, Brahman is bliss. The second Anuvaka of Ananda Valley then proceeds to explain the first layer of man's nature and knowledge seeking to be about material man and material nature", with the metaphor of food. The Taittiriya Upanishad asserts that both material man and material nature 
are caused by Brahman, are manifestations of Brahman, are Brahman, but only the outermost shell or sheath of existence. The verse offers relational connection between natural elements, asserting that everything is food to something else in universe at the empirical level of existence, either at a given time, or over time. All creatures are born out of this, food provided by nature and food provided by life with time. All creatures grow due to food, and thus are interdependent. All creatures, upon their death, become food in this food chain, states Ananda Valley's second verse. Learning, knowing and understanding this food chain, material nature of existence and the interdependence is the first essential, yet outermost incomplete knowledge. Topic. Pranamaya, third Anuvaka The second inner level of nature and knowledge seeking is about life force, asserts Ananda Valley's third Anuvaka. This life force is identified by and dependent on breathing. Gods breathe, human beings breathe, animals breathe, as do all beings that exist. Life force is more than material universe, it includes animating processes inside the being, particularly breathing, and this layer of nature and knowledge is pranamaya kosha. Topic. Manamaya, fourth Anuvaka The next inner, deeper layer of nature and knowledge seeking relates to manas mind, thought, will, wish, or manamaya kosha. Manas, asserts the fourth Anuvaka of Ananda Valley, exists only in individual forms of beings. It is characterized by the power to will, the ability to wish, and the striving for prosperity through actions on the empirical nature, knowledge and beings. The verse of fourth Anuvaka add that this knowledge is essential yet incomplete, that it the knowledge of Brahman that truly liberates, and one who knows Atman Brahman, dreads nothing, now and never, and lives contently, in bliss. Topic. Vijnanamaya, fifth Anuvaka The fifth Anuvaka of Ananda Valley states that the Manamaya Kosha thought, will, wish envelops a deeper more profound layer of existence, which is the Vijnana Maya Kosha knowledge, ethics, reason. This is the realm of knowledge observed in all human beings. The Vijnana Maya is characterized by faith, justice, truth, yoga and mahas power to perceive and reason. The individual who is aware of Vijnana Maya, asserts the verses of Ananda Valley, offers knowledge as the work to others. Topic. Anandamaya, 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th Anuvaka The 6th, 7th and 8th Anuvaka of Ananda Valley states that the Vijnanamaya Kosha knowledge, ethics, reason envelops the deepest, hidden layer of existence, which is the Ananda Maya Kosha bliss, tranquility, contentness. This is the innermost as the realm of Atman Brahman soul, self, spirituality. The Ananda Maya is characterized by love, joy, cheerfulness, bliss and Brahman. The individuals who are aware of Ananda Maya, assert the sixth to eighth verses of Ananda Valley, are those who simultaneously realize the empirical and the spiritual, the conscious and unconscious, the changing and the eternal, the time and the timeless. These last Anuvakas of the second valley of Tatiriya Upanishad assert that he who has self-knowledge is well constituted, he realizes the essence, he is full of bliss. He exists in peace within and without, his is a state of calm joy irrespective of circumstances, he is one with everything and everyone. He fears nothing, he fears no one, he lives his true nature, he is free from pride, he is free from guilt, he is beyond good and evil, he is free from craving desires and thus all the universe is in him and is his. His blissful being is Atman Brahman, and Atman Brahman is the bliss that is he. Topic. Burgu Valley. The third valley of Tatiriya Upanishad repeats the ideas of Ananda Valley, through a legend about sage Brigu. The chapter is also similar in its themes and focus to those found in Chapter 3 of Kausataki Upanishad and Chapter 8 of Chandogya Upanishad. The Brigu Valley's theme is the exposition of the concept of Atman Brahman self, soul, and what it means to be a self-realized, free, liberated human being. The first six Anuvakas of Brigu Valley are called Bhargavi Varuni Vidya, which means the knowledge Brigu got from his father Varuni. It is in these Anuvakas that sage Varuni advises Brigu with one of the oft-cited definition of Brahman, as that from which beings originate, through which they live, and in which they re-enter after death, explore that because that is Brahman. 
This thematic, all-encompassing, eternal nature of reality and existence develops as the basis for Brigu's emphasis on introspection and inwardization, to help peel off the outer husks of knowledge, in order to reach and realize the innermost kernel of spiritual self-knowledge. The last four of the ten Anuvakas of Brigu Valley build on this foundation, but once again like Ananda Valley, use the metaphor of food, as in Ananda Valley. As with Ananda Valley, in Brigu Valley, everything and everyone is asserted to be connected and deeply interrelated to everything and everyone else, by being food of energy, of material, of knowledge. Food is founded on food, asserts verse 3.9 of Taittiriya Upanishad, which then illustrates the idea with the specific example. Earth is founded on food for space, and space is founded on food for earth. After discussing the nature of Brahman, the Brigu Valley chapter of Taittiriya Upanishad recommends the following maxims and vows. Never scorn food, which metaphorically means, never scorn anything or anyone. Increase food, which metaphorically means, increase prosperity of everyone and everything. Refuse no guest to your house, and share food with everyone including strangers which metaphorically means, "...compassionately help everyone, sharing plentiful prosperity and knowledge." The Taittiriya Upanishad closes with the following declaration Translations Though a number of commentaries were published on the Taittiriya Upanishad in Sanskrit and Indian languages through the years, including popular ones by Shankara, Sayanana and Ramanuja, the first European translations of the work began to appear in 1805, up to the early 1900s. They began to appear in English, German and French, primarily by Max Muller, Griffith, Muir, and Wilson, all of whom were either Western academics based in Europe or in colonial India. The Taittiriya Upanishad was first translated in non-Indian languages Jacqueline Hurst, in her analysis of Adi Shankara's works, states that Taittiriya Upanishad Basia provides one of his key exegesis. Shankara presents knowledge and truth as different, non-superimposable but interrelated. Knowledge can be right or wrong, correct or incorrect, a distinction that principles of truth and truthfulness help distinguish. Truth cleanses knowledge, helping man understand the nature of empirical truths and hidden truths invisible laws and principles, spirit, soul, self. Together states Shankara in his Taittiriya Upanishad Basia, knowledge and truth point to oneness of all, Brahman as nothing other than self, soul in every human being. Paul Horsch, in his review of the historical development of Dharma concept and ethics in Indian philosophies, includes Taittiriya Upanishad as among the ancient influential texts. Kirkwood makes a similar observation. Bhatta states that Taittiriya Upanishad is one of earliest expositions of education system in ancient Indian culture. Paul Dusan, in his preface to Taittiriya Upanishad's translation, states that Ananda Valley chapter of Taittiriya Upanishad is one of the most beautiful evidences of the ancient Indians' deep absorption in the mystery of nature and of the inmost part of the human being. The Taittiriya Upanishad has been translated into a number of Indian languages as well, by a large number of scholars including Dayanand Saraswati, Bhandarkar, and in more recent years, by organizations such as the Chinmayananda Mission. See also Atithi Devo Bhav Upanishad Vedas Hinduism References Further reading Outlines of Indian Philosophy by M. Haryana. Mudalal Banarasita's Publishers. Kannada translation of Taittiriya Upanishad by Swami Adidivananda Ramakrishna Mission Publishers. External links The Taittiriya Upanishad with the commentaries of Sankaracharya, Shirsvaracharya and Sayana Vidyaranya, translated by A. M. Sastri proofread edition with proper Unicode diacritics and a glossary, originally scanned at archive.org Taittiriya Upanishad, translated by Swami Sharvananda with the original text in Devanagari, transliteration of each sloka, and word-for-word -word English rendering followed by a running translation and notes based on Shankaracharya's commentary. ISBN 81-7823-050-X 
Taittiriya Upanishad, multiple translations Johnston, Nikhilananda, Gambarananda Taittiriya Upanishad, Sanskrit manuscript Taittiriya Upanishad, Sanskrit manuscript with Vedic accents Taittiriya Upanishad vision of Advaita Vedanta in Taittiriya Upanishad <laughs>